Smash 65 came out in early 1998 for the Super Nintendo Entertainment System. This was the first time that Nintendo brought all of your favorite characters into one big beat-em-up. The level design was unlike anything we had ever seen before, with classic stages such as Pokemon Go, Outer Space, that lava stage, Skylanders, and you can't forget Donko City. The game was forever changed just five short years later when Nintendo unveiled Super Smash Bros. for the Nintendo GameCube at E3. Melee took the gaming industry by storm. In terms of raw sales, Melee had sold more copies than every other video game ever combined. With such a diverse cast of characters featuring all your favorites from the N65, as well as a few newcomers, such as those two sword guys you probably hadn't heard of at the time, and that kid Link. What's that? Melee wasn't just another carbon copy of its predecessor with a few characters added though. It introduced real one-player action through adventure mode, and included a race mode in which you raced to the top of Mount Everest instead of actually fighting. Wait, what? But we all know there's only one way to play Melee. That's right, Fox only, no items, final destination, let's go! Oh, yo, oh, yo, wave dash! Oh, what are these items doing? Gotta go turn those off, I forgot I had them on. It's not real Melee until you turn the items off. Uh, how do I do that again? Um, rules, uh, where is it? Oh, there it is, item switch, alright. Uh, there we go, set it to none. Alright, let's do this. We're doing this for real now. Let's go box only. No items, baby. <laughs> the next iteration of Smash has always been a fan favorite. Super Smash Brothers Brawl. Some people to this day will even say that Brawl was one happy accident. Although intended as more of a party and casual game, Sakurai accidentally made this version be by far the most competitive yet. And in the 2007 EVO World Finals, Sakurai himself made it to Grands and won in spectacular fashion. Why Brawl eventually came to die out will always remain a mystery. This was not the end of Smash though, because in 2015, a team of advanced elite hackers came together to create their own version of Smash to save this quickly dying fanbase. Introducing Project M. Despite the initial success, the Project M scene wouldn't stay around for long. In February of 2015, the popular weekly tournament known as Xanadu was raided by a SWAT team. Every known cartridge of Project M was confiscated, and PM's creator, VGBC Gimmer, was arrested and thrown into jail. After this incident, Gimmer was forced to make a post explaining that Project M would cease development. As of today, there are rumors of an underground PM circuit, but these are all just believed to be urban myth. 
whether anyone was actually able to successfully hide a Project M cartridge during the Xanadu raid remains uncertain. Smash for 3DS was a real game changer. For the first time ever, you could take all your salt on the go. Okay, well maybe you could before, but let's just be real, those GameCube screens suck! Smash soon began a renaissance, and we entered the golden age of Smash. With a new game out for the Wii U, and lots of new kids brought into the scene by the Melee documentary, tournaments grew larger than ever. Year after year, we saw exponential growth in both tournament attendance and stream viewership. So where does that leave us now? Well, it turns out that Smash is dying, and this is the end of the road.